why your primary residence should never be owned in your own name. Hi, I am Jakob Groblar, the founder and managing director of Prosperity Enterprises. In which structure should you buy your home? So many financial advisors advise individuals to buy their home in their personal name. But this is probably the worst place where you can own your primary residence. Your primary residence is a safe haven. It's an asset near to your heart and it's an asset that you want to protect. For that reason, the last place where your primary residence should sit is in your name. Now, financial advisors would usually advise you to buy your primary residence in your personal name for capital gains tax reasons. The reason for that is because you have a capital gain tax exemption when you buy your primary residence in your personal name and you sell it with a capital gain. However, as a property investor, often you would never sell property and that tax is limited to a couple of hundred thousand rand. Thereafter, there is just risks and issues, but these benefits come at a cost. First and foremost, when you buy your primary residence in your own name, your asset is not protected. If anything goes wrong with you financially, creditors can come and take this asset from you. Secondly, if you had to die, your primary residence would form part of your deceased estate, which will trigger a lot of costs such as executive fees, capital gains tax, estate duty and transfer fees. Thirdly, and this is a big one for me as a property investor, is when you own your primary residence on your own name and you finance it, you also have a lot of debt in your own name and that debt cripples you and limits you to get financing for your investment properties. And lastly, there are also some tax benefits that you could lose out on if you do not own the property in an entity. Most people don't think that anything will happen to them financially, yet there are people every day that go bankrupt or are impacted negatively financially that places them in a position where their assets are at risk. Having your property thus in an entity is extremely important. In our YouTube video, why you need to have two trusts, we discussed the importance of having two trusts in place and to then build your entire property portfolio and your personal assets within these structures. So for me, there are two ways that you can own your primary residence. Firstly, is in a property company with the shares of that property company held in a holdings trust. By using this structure, your asset, your primary residence that is, would be protected, it will not form part of your deceased estate, it will give you more financing capability and it will give you possible tax benefits. I love this approach when the property that you now see as your primary residence will one day be an investment property, meaning one day you will move out of this property and you will place a tenant in this property. If your long-term goal of a property is to turn it into an investment property, best is to keep it in a company underneath a holdings trust so that when it converts to a rental property, it is already at the right place. Alternatively, you can also keep your primary residence in your family trust. Now, usually you would keep your property, your primary residence that is, in your family trust if the intention for you is to live there for a very long time or alternatively if you are not going to rent the property out when you move but you are rather planning to sell it when you acquire property in your family trust it is advisable that you pay off that property as quickly as possible if you did take a loan out and if you do need to sell the property out of your family trust Remember that the conduit principle is applicable. So you are not going to pay the high tax rates that a family trust is taxed at. You are going to distribute those capital gains to individuals, to beneficiaries. And those beneficiaries 
will then pay the taxes in their personal capacity with their exemptions and their tax rates applicable. Watch our YouTube video on why you need a separate family trust. So, you could either own your property in a company with a holdings trust holding the shares, or alternatively, you can hold the property in your family trust. But do not own the property in your personal name. They say home is where the heart is. So make sure that you place your home in a safe space where it is protected, where it does not fall part of your deceased estate, where you still have financing capability, and where you can take advantage of the many tax benefits. Remember to click on the link in the comment section to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us or to book for a property investment seminar near you. If you like this content and would like to receive more of it, remember to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.